Fora TV. Idea Immersion. Visit us at www.fora.tv. Now I'm going to do a duet with Sean McLean Brown. Sean is a veteran. He was a U.S. He was in the U.S. Marines in the, during the Gulf War I, and now he's a teacher at Oolani College and De Anza College. Thank you for your presence tonight. It's really fantastic to have everybody here. This piece, that, uh, the passage that Maxine is going to read, is a passage in uh, The Woman Warrior, which if you haven't read, I imagine everybody in here has probably read it many, many times. It's a passage that I've kept returning to for some reason. So I thought, there's something significant being said here to me, and I need to pay attention to it. So I wrote a response to it. And so Maxine's going to read her passage, and then I'm going to read my response to it. I was born in the middle of World War II. From earliest awareness, my mother's stories, always timely, I watched for three airplanes parting. Much as I dream recurringly about shrinking babies, I dream that the sky is covered from horizon to horizon with rows of airplanes, dirigibles, rocket ships, flying bombs, their formations as even as stitches. When the sky seems clear in my dreams and I would fly, if I look too closely, there so silent, far away and faint in the daylight that people who do not know about them do not see them are shiny silver machines, some not yet invented, being moved, fleets always being moved from one continent to another, one planet to another. I must figure out a way to fly between them. Blue. I was born in the middle of Vietnam. Nothing special about my birth. Just a shadowy notion of slipping through a tunnel. The chute going cold after a long blue night. Morning, a rise over dunes, the Atlantic, shipwrecks and fighter jets, and later, many years of absence, how the filling of womb makes meaning only after when empty, how even the faintest of pulses is enough to make a mother cry. Our family of ghosts, they roam the attic like stereotypes, clanging their heavy chains of failed relationships. Always I dream of my grandfather, as stolid as a monument in a Michigan blizzard, with his piercing blue eyes, and my father in his dress blues off to war. I call to them with all my voices. No one returns my call. After all this time, as much as love and absence, generations settle in sleep, for all of this, I have no voice, no answer to my many questions. I've carried these secrets safely over continents and three decades. Now is the time to loose them over the ocean and see in the instant my heart stops a whole galaxy of blue, perfectly flat, not the promise of a gift, but the gift itself. Thank you.